So this morning, my sermon, I'm preaching on anger. And I feel that that topic is very important, and I want to explain why. Because there's two different kinds of bad anger. One is called displaced anger. So that means that you're mad at people, but it's not their fault. Really, things happen to you when you're growing up, or things happen to, like while you're an adult, and you get angry at a person that you're social with, that you're married to, or your children, or maybe your parents. You're angry at them, but they're not the one who hurt you. And that, that causes your anger. And the second one is called jealousy. We all have a problem with jealousy, right? Yes? Everyone does. Everyone has a problem with jealousy. Some of our... We all do have a problem with jealousy for sure. So those two types of anger I want to discuss because when we become angry, it brings out ugliness in people. We get jealous and we get angry from something that happens in our past or something that happened today. But we get angry at people who are there with us and we become very ugly people. We become monsters. Sometimes I think, well, who am I? How did that rage, where did that rage come from? And I have to take a time out, I have to think about it. And I get mad when some little thing happened. Did I get mad? It's actually things from my past, big things from my past that have happened. And it makes the little things, makes me just flip out in anger. And I chew, get two people out and I get upset. And I have to take a time out, I have to think about it. And I have to think, I'm mad because of this that happened, not this current thing that's happening. It's very important to understand that that is called displaced anger. We don't realize sometimes that we have it inside because we're used to having it. We've pressed it down. We've pressed that anger down inside and then we just keep on going about our life and we get mad at our husband or our wife or our children, parents, co-workers. And it's from things that happened way back when. And it makes us so very sensitive and have a short fuse. And it's very important to understand my anger, is it appropriate or not appropriate? So anger makes us sick. It makes us very, very sick physically. It makes us very sick physically in our marriages. It makes us very sick with people. Anger is a terrible thing and it influences our behavior. Anger influences our thoughts. Anger influences our mood. Anger influences our happiness. Our relationships with people. Anger influences your relationships with your spouse. And it influences your relationship with your children. Anger is awful. It's poison. It's, there's many, many things. Our behavior changes, and our ability to confront small problems is ruined. Our ability to confront conflict and discuss things and solve problems is ruined. Anger makes us respond in the wrong ways. Scientifically proven that anger gives us sickness in our bodies. You think you're normal, you're just going about your business, but your body, you think your body gets worse as it gets older, but it does not. Our body can be more healthy at 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years old. It can be. Anger influences your blood pressure. It affects your digestive system. Anger affects your heart. Anger is not funny if it's left inside without any resolve. It just eats away at you. I read an article that doctors said that some doctors believe 
that people who have cancer, you can look back three years and you can see if during that three year time frame there was a big problem in your life. It's not always the case, no, but some, the anger problems, it just eats away at you and it, makes, it affects your system, it makes, messes up your system. You can be physically sick and your relationships can be sick. I have people who come to me that want counseling. And some people have problems today, but they find out that really it's from a long time ago. It's a high percentage, it's from a long time in their past. So many things have happened in my life as I've grown up, and then this would make me angry over some little thing. And sometimes anger is right and appropriate. There's two wrong kinds of anger, displaced and jealousy. But there is a good anger. Anger over sin, being angry over sin. Jesus was angry in the temple when he threw over the tables. He was angry in the temple because people were selling things for money. They were taking advantage. And it was really important that Jesus, that anger that Jesus showed was important. It's important to know that we must confront that anger. We must figure out, is my anger with my relationship with my spouse, is my relationship not good because of my anger? It, is it, or is it from something else? It's so important to always, every time you have anger, you have problems, anger problems inside, that you find out where it's coming from. Because it's not coming from the little things that you're arguing about. It's not. I promise you it's not. You should be able to have a disagreement with your spouse or your children or your parents or your coworkers. A disagreement does not mean yelling. I hope that's clear. We have, we have, we can disagree, we can have different opinions, but we need to be able to sit down and discuss these things. And maybe you can learn from each other. But a disagreement does not give us license or permission to yell and chew people out and break things and throw things and kick things and just flip out. Anger is strong. Anger makes us become a different animal, right? I've been there too. Anger is ugly. Disagreement is different than an opinion. Having an opinion is good. To sit, if you're willing to say, I have an opinion, but it doesn't mean your opinion's right. Right? So he may have an opinion, but it doesn't mean his opinion's right. So we all have different perspectives. And that's a good thing. That's why we have the deacon board. We all can sit around and we can vote. I mean, sometimes it's nice we vote 100% on something. That's great. That's nice. But maybe there's different opinions within the board that we can discuss. So a disagreement and different opinions does not give us a license for you to flip out. If you do flip out, and yes, I know your husband or your wife or your kids or teenagers or coworkers, they did something dumb that really irritated you, that's normal, that's life. That's just life. Accept it. Like Pastor Noah always says, embrace it. We're supposed to drive each other crazy because we're different. We are different people. We were created differently. We're unique, so embrace it. But if you flip out, find out what is inside of you from your past that's chewing on you. Maybe you didn't realize it. I'm thinking, what's wrong with me? But really, and the Holy Spirit will show you if you pray over it. He will show you what's wrong. If you say, what's wrong with me? What am I flipping out about this? The PowerPoint's not working, but hang on. If you go back, you can go back and think. Oh, okay, I'm not upset with the PowerPoint. 
I got upset because my mother before, or my father before, you can find out something. It's important to know what's causing you to become a different animal inside. Does that make sense? I'm reading from Genesis 37. This is a good story about Jacob. Do you remember the story about Jacob? Yes or no? So he had many sons, and his favorite son was who was it? Joseph. And Joseph was not the last one. Benjamin was the last one. But Joseph was the second to the last son. And he loved him. He was his favorite son. And all the other brothers looked to Jacob, and they saw him getting spoiled, and, and he just said, oh, he's my favorite. And Jacob made... Joseph a coat, a beautiful fancy coat, it was so beautiful, and he gave that to him as a gift. So, do you, I'm sure when the brothers saw him in his coat, you know, he, they were thinking, oh, ha ha, look at me, what I have, but he put on the coat, and one day Joseph was, he was explaining a dream, and it sounded like he said something about that they were all bowing to Joseph, and they got mad when he told them this dream. So they went all went out in the field to work, and Joseph stayed at home. And Jacob said, you can go make sure your brothers are okay. And so Joseph said, okay. And his brothers saw him coming, and they disgusted him. They said they wanted to kill him. They were so angry. They wanted to kill him, kill him, their brother, because of jealousy. So they disgusted it, and then one brother, the oldest, said, It'd be better to just put him in a cistern and leave him in there. So they grabbed him, they took his coat off, and they put him in there. And they said, see, our father, you're our father's favorite, and they're just going to leave him in there. And they saw a group coming, traveling to Egypt. And the brothers decided to take him out and sell him into slavery. So when he arrived in Egypt... He was sold, and at the end, good things happened. Joseph became, a lot later, Joseph became, it talks in Genesis about him becoming the king's, second to the king. He, he had a good life, it was a good life for him. And Jacob's son, they showed, they showed him the coat, they put blood on it, and they told him that J Joseph died, and Jacob was so sad, and he wept, and he cried. And then later there was a famine, and they had to go to Egypt to find food. It was a lot later, and you need to read that book. It is a beautiful, wonderful story. But later, Joseph, the brothers saw him, and they apologized, and said they were so sorry. And they wanted to move to Hebrew or to Egypt to live there. So that they were the king was wondering why that why they wanted to live there. So that's an example of jealousy. That people became so jealous that they wanted to kill their own brother. Also called displaced anger. Is that displaced anger? Yeah, yes or no? Yes, why? Because it was the father. It wasn't Joseph's fault. Joseph was innocent. He was just a son, and his dad likes me better. So they should be mad at the dad for showing favoritism to Joseph. But they... They wanted to kill Joseph. It wasn't fair, but that is a perfect example of displaced anger. Making sure that your anger is at the right people. Your husband or wife did not abuse you. Your husband or wife did not molest you. Your husband or wife did not steal food from you. Make sure that you're mad at the right people. Not at the people who live with you today.
Make sure you're mad at the right people. And get counseling, get help to solve, to resolve that anger, the old issues that are still stuck inside. That ruins your relationship with your family, with your children, ruins your relationship with yourself. Can you imagine if you got help for all of those, all that junk that's left inside and you cleansed yourself of all of that? You could really enjoy life. You could be healthy inside, healthy outside. And you could enjoy life from this point on. It would be wonderful if we find out why we have that anger. And do you remember the first person who showed jealousy? The first person was Cain when he killed his brother. That was the first murder, the first jealousy with people, right? God is a jealous God, that's right. It says that in the Bible. That's for something else. Satan. He so wanted God's position. He wanted to control the universe. Satan wants so badly, and God's like, no, you're out of here. And he wanted to be father of, so that's why Satan is father of the world. So do not be like Satan. Satan wants you to be angry. This is so key. I've had to tell myself this every day. Satan wants to ruin your life. Satan wants your marriage to be ruined. Satan wants you to have a hard time with your teenager. Satan wants these teens to be mean to their parents and disrespectful to their parents. Satan wants you unhappy. Satan wants you sick. Satan wants you to blow up at the wrong people. And Satan wants you to live a miserable life. He is one design. He's the one who designed, did not design us. God designed us to be happy and beautiful and have a great, healthy life. But Satan designed the conflicts. Every time you say, yes, I'm going to be mad at my wife or my husband or my children or my teenager, or a teenager says to be mad at my parents. Teenagers, you know your parents are supposed to teach you. They're supposed to take care of you. They're supposed to. But still, something is weird. Something weird comes out. It's not all, it's not all DNA or hormones. You just have to make the decision. When it tries to come out, you have to push it back in and say, I have to, I'm making a decision to be better. I can be better today. I'm going to make a decision to follow him, follow the truth. Where's my Bible? Can somebody bring me my Bible? I'm going to make a decision to follow the truth. To follow scripture. To say, I'm supposed to be happy. I'm supposed to enjoy my life. I'm supposed to be a good wife or a good husband or a good mother, a good father, a good co-worker, a good friend. I'm supposed to be good, a good person. So this says so. Our blessing. This is our gift. Thank you, Lord, for this gift. Without this, I don't know what I would do. We would kill each other. For sure, right? We'd be jealous, we'd be angry, we'd kill. We must make the decision to suppress or to fix or face or confront those problems that are from our past to figure out what is wrong with me. Why am I not happy? 
Why am I not enjoying life? Why am I not a good wife? Or why am I not a good husband? Why am I not a good parent? I'm not doing things the way I, I should. Like I'm arguing with a coworker all the time. Why am I always upset? I need to fix it. So go and be the best we can be. I will be a good wife. I will be a good husband. I will be a good co-worker. Maybe it means that you do more than you're supposed to. Maybe it means you, like maybe the husband does 80 and the wife does 20. Just do it. Just do it. Maybe at work you notice the boss, you know, favors someone else and they have less work and more pay and it's, it'll make you sick. Don't do it. Don't be jealous. You only do your job. Your job can be the best. It can be positive, right? It's serving. We can use it to serve God. And you have to make a decision that I will be the best I can be today. Go to bed, get up, and say, I'm going to be the best I can be today. Go to bed, get up, and say, I'm going to be the best I can be. Every single day. You think I'm a pastor and my marriage is easy, like cake? It's a hearing thing, okay. I didn't say it right, but anyway. You think, I know you think it's easy. 1,000% opposites, Al and I, or 1,000% opposite. Not 100%, 1,000% opposite, right Al? We get up every morning and say, I will be bet my best. I will give 100%. You have to get up and get up and get up every single day and say, I will be my best. Me, just me. My anger, if it comes out, I'm going to push it down. I'm going to figure out what's making me angry. It's not him. I know who, it's, who it is in my past. And it's still bothering me. It's obvious. It's obvious. It's still there. And I need to clean that up. I need to fix it. I need to get rid of it in the name of Jesus. Does that make sense? Anger. Displaced anger. It's fascinating. I studied it for many years, you know, a long time ago. The orphans in Europe, when they get adopted from Russia or Eastern Europe, Germany, they go to the U.S., France, all these different places when they're adopted. And there's scientific proof now that there's a study that's been done. And they found out that the orphans, they've had bad experiences. They've been abused, molested. Ba I mean, molesting babies like two years old is awful. They have no food. No toys, there's no touching, no holding, no nothing. It's all negative. It's a negative touch. So then they come into a wonderful family, and what happens? Guess what happens? They blame their new family that's displaced. It's fascinating art. I read a fascinating article. So the orphans get mad at the new family, and really it wasn't them. You know, the new family's like, it wasn't us, it was the old family. It was them, we didn't do anything. But their mind is just messed up because they're angry at the wrong people. And so that takes years and years of counseling. To, and it's very fascinating. That's called displaced anger. The Bible has many, many stories in it. And I plan to do a second story, but time's kind of running out. So, but I want you to read it, and I want you to see when you can find this place of anger or jealousy. Wow, there's most of the Bible stories. It's not the specific person that did it that they're angry at. It's someone else. It's someone. It's always someone else. And if you have issues with people that are close to you, find out what is real. Find out from your past. Dig deep. Now we feel, we see ourselves 
changing, transforming into a new, healthier person. It's very amazing. It's powerful. Psychology is powerful. So I want to read a scripture verse before I close. I love this verse. It's right, right? How many of you go to bed while you're angry still? It's not easy. I'm hard to live with right now. Right? Am I hard to live with? Yes or no? You're supposed to say no. Okay, now I'm mad. You're supposed to say no. You're so easy to live with. He failed. Okay, anyway. You shouldn't go to bed angry because it's hard to solve a problem, especially if you're ar arguing at midnight. You'd be awake all night arguing, right? But it's true. If you go to bed angry, your anger will plant itself and it'll grow roots deep into your heart and your mind and your soul. It's true. But, and you wake up a different person. You wake up and your anger will already have started growing. It's very important. So remember I told you, if you have a disagreement, you need to sit down and talk about it. And don't blow up and yell and flip out, right? Discuss it. But guess what? Problems of the world, it takes two. If one of you is not willing to discuss it, it's ruined. It's over. If both of you are not willing to sit down and discuss and have a peaceful resolution, then it's over. It always takes two people. You have to both agree to sit and calm down and discuss it until you solve it. But if one won't, then it's over. So I want you to read this scripture. It's very important, the first sentence. In your anger, do not sin. Sin is blaming the wrong people, blowing up, flipping out, breaking your house. I know some people break their phones a thousand times. I say, why? You should cherish your money. But it's obviously something inside that's growing that they have not yet resolved. So do not be angry. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. God knew that anger would make you sick. Blood pressure would be high. Your stomach, you couldn't eat right because you have to take medicine. God knew that. What does it say? The last one, what does it say? What does that mean? You're right. If you follow this, oh wait, if you don't follow this, the devil will be hanging on to you. He'll just keep holding on and you can't shake him off. You can't even move forward because he's holding on to you. You can't get on with your life because the devil's holding on. So if you get mad and blow up and break things, you can't solve things, you can't sit and discuss or figure out the problem, because he's hanging on. You're stuck. So we're going to have communion.